This is one of those ETFs where I had to Google what it even means uh, when I saw that it came out. But basically, these are just very big, fast computers that can take on more complex problems. They use quantum shifts in a way to be faster than electricity. And this is supposed to help breakthroughs in science and finance and a, and a lot of industries. So this is what it's trying to get to capture. It's pretty small at 13 million. It's got 40, 40 basis points as the fee. Pretty low for a theme ETF, to be honest. Let's look at the holdings. Now, you're probably not going to recognize a lot of these companies. You might recognize some. Uh, but the bottom line is it's got a lot of tech and semis, but only 18% overlap with XLK. So XLK gets you some of this, but not, not the bulk of it. Um, and it's also got, um, like I said, 50% semiconductors. Let's compare it to the closest thing I could think of, which is Kathy Wood's ArcW, which is next generation internet. It's not even that uh, close of a comparison, but just to give you an idea of another type of ETF like this, you can see here the active share to XLK uh, is important. Also the cost, it's cheap again for one of these. And then look at the one year return, 44%. That really is much better than the market. And uh, Scarlett, to me, that's an important thing because a lot of people may not even understand what this is, but they do understand what 44% returns are. Right, and that'll lead to an inflow of assets as well. Still with us is Paul Delaquilla, president at Defiance ETFs. So Paul, do investors really understand what quantum computing is or do they just like the sound of the Google definition that Eric came up with? <laughs> so thank you both for having me on the program again. And I, I do think there is a very early concept for most investors to comprehend. And that, mm -hmm. that was what we spent the last year doing is really educating. I think the breakthrough with Google, uh, Google Sycamore, that's their quantum computer, in October has brought a lot of that news to the forefront where they're able to solve a computation that would have taken a normal computer 10,000 years and did it in under uh, 300 seconds. Uh, we talked earlier, you said that, that that Thai cave incident with the divers is where this would come in handy. Can you just explain that as a real world uh, problem that it solved or Absolute, can solve? Absolutely, Eric. And, and you mentioned complexity and that's what quantum computer can ultimately solve. Yes, it's gonna be faster, but it's about the complexity of it. Most computers right now work in a linear fashion. In other words, they're solving for one data point. What you could do with something that's a little bit more complex, like the Thai uh, uh, cave diver situation, you had to look at weather patterns. You had to look at how much oxygen the kids actually had in the cave before bringing them out. How long will it take the divers to get there? All of these factors. You could input that into a quantum computer and get the actual solution, as opposed to a number of solutions, mm. done in many different linear fashions. Okay, that makes sense, and I like the live example here. When we looked at the members of the fund, you've got some big names like Microsoft, Apple, Texas Instruments, along with smaller companies, and it kind of feels like a catch-all for tech. How far along are we in the, in the rollout of quantum computing? I mean, at what point will it start to touch our everyday lives where people can point to specific examples that they can relate to, not just what they read about uh, once in a while? Sure, and I think the reality is this isn't something that we're probably going to have in our living rooms anytime soon, but mm -hmm. it is something that data scientists and big corporations are going to be able to access through the cloud and whatnot. You're already seeing that, so IBM is pointing to actually being able to show revenue in the next year or so, being able, able to be derived directly from quantum computing, and I mentioned the breakthrough that Google had. So it's going to be much, much more uh, prevalent as the years go on, uh, but there is a machine learning component to the fund as well, which is happening right now. So it is, there's some current aspects to it that we're very excited about. Um, now, I want to shift to your other related ETF, 5G. Uh, it's the first 5G ETF. It's pretty big. It's like over $100 billion at this point. I spoke with John Butler, who's our analyst who covers this. He's very excited about 5G. He thinks it's a big deal. I showed him the holdings. He, his one critique was it leans a little heavy to semis. He thinks there's maybe a little too much semiconductors. What's the rationale behind going so, so much into that subsector? So the way we looked at it, we tried to capture the entire ecosystem of the 5G build out. So in addition to semis, which we do have, we call that more core equipment than anything else. Um, so you have radio access equipment, you have semiconductors in there. Uh, we also have mobile network operators, the Verizons and AT&Ts of the world, and the REITs and the infrastructure plays. So it rolls back to my original premise of the fund. It is very difficult to find the one or two equities that are going to be able to capture this 5G build out. There's such, such a big ecosystem around it that an ETF, because it's broad and capture more sectors, you're going to be able to get all of those in under one umbrella as opposed to buying a bunch of individual equities. All right. We have time for one more question here. I got to ask you about uh, a new fund here with the best ticker, Diet. <laughs> it's small. It's only got about $2.5 million in assets, but the idea of it is basically the future of food. Correct. Uh, Diet just launched a little under a month ago, about three weeks ago. The reality of what we are trying to produce with this fund is food innovation and sustainability. We can all agree that you know people are being more more cognizant of what they're putting into their bodies and how that's being impacted by the environment, way of food production. So what we try to do with diet is provide the leaders of that industry under one ticker that is a very differentiated exposure than what you're going to have in, say, a core S&P 500. It's a yeah. very, very different portfolio.